know, muscularity related concerns are becoming increasingly prevalent and I, and I think it's due to the increasing array of the exposure to the ideal male muscular image and also the fact that these images are becoming increasingly muscular. And, and when we talk about how prevalent are muscularity concerns now, around about, the, well, around about 85% of men report a desire to increase their muscularity and reduce their level of body fat. And you know, this is evident across the lifespan as well. Even, even boys as young as six demonstrate a, a definite preference for muscular type bodies. You know, adolescents in the United States report, 90% of those report exercising partially to um, cultivate more muscularity. So these concerns are really, really prevalent and becoming increasingly prevalent, in fact. That's a really good question, and there's no short answer to that. Um, my, my thoughts are yes, muscle dysmorphia is an eating disorder, and really en encapsulates what the male experience of disordered eating looks and feels like for these guys. We know that, that uh, eating disorders are inherently tied to sociocultural trends. In an anorexia nervosa, it's the case of a pursuit of a thin, idealized body, and there's no real correlate in the eating disorder framework for what emanates from a pursuit of a muscular body. And so we think muscular, uh, muscle dysmorphia is an eating disorder. It emanates from an overvalued ideal image and it involves sort of disturbed eating and feeding behaviors, most of which are oriented around weight gain uh, and, and, and are wrapped up in protein consumption, but also include the restriction of dietary carbs and fats as well to promote the loss of body fat whilst maintaining a greater muscularity. So these, this disorder in my mind is definitely linked centrally to disordered eating and, and I think is an eating disorder. My take home message from the presentation is twofold and it's firstly that eating disorders in males are not a minority. And the second take home message and probably the more important one is that we should be cognizant of the fact that a different array of ideal body types promotes a different array of disordered eating behaviors and we really have to be flexible both as clinicians and researchers in meeting our clients where they're at and, and helping understand what eating disorder behaviors emanate from a specific idealized body.